We have Sangeeta Reddy. Yeah, she, no, she be able to uh, give us some opinion on that. Oh, good idea. Huh? So, good evening and namaste. It's a great pleasure to be with all of you, and I want to thank uh, um, Amita Bachanji for just re, uh, you know, giving your support to this most important subject. Uh, because every time you come up here and speak about healthcare, it enhances the visibility. So, uh, Pranoy and Amitabhji, thank you very much. Uh, coming to the aspect of what we're looking at, what do we want? We want universal health access for people. And this is enabled through a combination of things. We need more beds. We need more healthcare workers, whether they're doctors. So we have to double our doctors, triple our nurses, and grow by four times our paramedics. So this is the infrastructure piece then we need to enhance our efficiency. So whether this is automation, we're working on artificial intelligence, we're working on rural enablement, new devices so that we can, doctors can see things, uh, you know, sitting in a city, they can still diagnose and treat uh, a rural patient. And we've been working across all these realms. So whether it's drones or uh, 3D printing, all these will enhance efficiency and effectiveness. And the third very important pillar is really the focus on prevention. Because when we hear of a friend who's had um, a bypass surgery and they cleared four vessels or they had an angioplasty and put five stents, the question we should be asking ourselves is where was this individual when his first vessel got partially blocked? And why can't we find them then and treat them medically? When we find cancer, 63% of cancers in our country are detected in stage three and four. If we find them at stage one, we can treat it cost effectively, less uh, with less pain and definitely with a lower mortality. So this is really the broad framework of looking at all three and many of the wonderful solutions we've been talking about come into that categorization. So while coming back to the question you directly asked me on number of beds, Number one, we have to create deeper incentives towards putting up hospital beds and healthcare. And some governments are doing that. There's an interesting plan which has come up called viability gap funding because beds in rural areas are not attracting the investment. So how do you enable that to do that? At Apollo, we've created a model called REACH, which is the rural empowerment and access to quality healthcare. So rural models like these need uh, adequate support, more funding, and then we have to find ways to encourage doctors and medical students to really be in those areas. On top of that, we put telemedicine layers, we put drones, we do local manufacturing, the whole Atmanirbar, so that we can bring down the cost of treatment. And then finally, uh, to push Ayushman Bharat so that the affordability comes in. So it's a combination of solutions. I think our country is moving. We have many things to be proud of, especially in terms of you know, high-end care. Uh, I want to end with just one uh, very nice story of a young girl who spent 14 years of her life viewing the world upside down because her neck, her cervical spine was completely 190 degrees circulated. Our surgeon found a way to change the vertebular column and enable her to see life looking straight. And this young girl is from Pakistan and has gone back to tell this story. So uh, there are fantastic things that Indian doctors can do. Let's all work together towards enabling this for our country and for the world. It's wonderful news fantastic. to hear.